Hello and welcome to your first video lesson for Social Studies 10, Introduction to Globalization. During this course, you will be watching a series of YouTube videos related to the key course content in Social Studies 10. These videos are simply a basic introduction to what you're learning in class. They're not meant to replace what you do in a classroom, but they are instead meant to provide the foundation of understanding so that Later on in class, you be begin to understand the course, and then you'll dig deeper and begin to formulate your own opinion about what you're learning in class. In this video, you'll be introduced to the overarching key question for Social Studies 10. The key units of study for Social Studies 10, some basic understanding of what globalization is, and some interesting details that you'll be learning about globalization in class. For each video that you're assigned to watch this year, you'll be expected to answer some video questions for understanding after you watch the video. And those questions you can use later in class in order to answer a quiz and be able to provide your understanding of what you watched in that video. The video questions for understanding for this lesson are as follows. Number one, what is the overarching key question for Social Studies 10? Number two, what are the four key units of study in Social Studies 10? Number three, what is globalization? Number four, what are some examples of globalization? And number five, what are some important details about globalization we'll be discussing this semester? So, let's begin. We will start with the overarching key question for Social Studies 10, which is, to what extent should we embrace globalization? In this course, not only will you learn what globalization is and how it shapes our world, but you will also consider how globalization affects your life. You will learn about how globalization shapes your identity, how it has affected people in Canada and around the world in the past, and how the positive and negative effects it has on us economically, socially, politically, and environmentally. By the end of this course, you will have learned a whole lot about globalization. You will determine the extent that you as a global citizen should embrace or accept the forces of globalization in your life. In the grand scheme of things, each of us is a global citizen with rights and responsibilities. This gives us the power to choose how we allow globalization to shape us and how we can make the world a better place for us and for generations to come. Next, let's look at the four key units of study in Social Studies 10. Unit 1 is called Globalization and Identity. In this unit, you will learn how globalization shapes our individual and collective identities how we shape glo and how we shape globalization. You will also learn about the forces of globalization in our lives, which are trade, transportation, communication technology, and media. You will uh, also consider the opportunities and challenges that globalization has on our culture, language, and identity, and examine ways that governments and organizations have attempted to affirm their language and culture in a globalizing world. Next is Unit 2, called Historical Globalization. In Unit 2, we examine how and why globalization began in the past. You will examine the foundations of globalization prior to the 20th century, otherwise known as the 1900s, which is considered the era of contemporary globalization. You will also understand the effects of historical cultural contact between Indigenous and non-Indigenous, or European people, both in Canada and around the world. Lastly, in Unit 2, you examine how people today in Canada and around the world have responded to the legacies of historical globalization. Unit 3 is called Sustainable Prosperity, which focuses more on contemporary issues related to economic globalization. First in Unit 3, you will examine the effects that the World War I, the Great Depression, and World War II had on our world and then examine the foundations for economic, of economic globalization that were created following World War II. 
those foundations shaped our global economy today. Then you will understand how economic globalization shapes our world today, including a focus on the role that free trade, outsourcing, transnational corporations, and technology have played in shaping our global economy. You will then examine the issue of sustainability in relation to the effects that globalization has on our environment and our society. Lastly, you will understand the issue of sustainable prosperity, which is a concept that in dealing with the positive and negative effects of globalization, we have to consider how we can balance our economic needs, the environment, and our society so as to ensure future generations will benefit from globalization as much as we have. The fourth and final unit is called Global Citizenship. In this unit, you will understand the role you play as a global citizen, including the issues of human rights, living in a democracy, and awareness of global issues. You will finish the course by providing an answer to the question, to what extent should I, as a citizen, respond to globalization? This question brings you back to the overarching key question of this course that we started with. So, did you think we're done? Nope, not yet. Social studies is more than just learning content and information. It is also in, includes developing some key skills that are important to becoming an active and engaged citizen of the world. Some skills that you will be developing in this course include critical and creative thinking, which means taking information that you were presented with and thinking critically about it, understanding that there are many different perspectives to any issue, Historical and geographic thinking, which includes learning some history of our world and some world geography, continents and countries. Decision making and problem solving, meaning that being a global citizen involves making decisions about yourself and your role in your world. And that our world is faced with some serious problems that need to be addressed. Research and information gathering. Probably one of the more important skills in a global world is researching and gathering information that is valid and factual and not fake or biased information. And by the way, just simply Googling information is not considered proper research. Oral, written, visual, and media literacy. To build on those skills, you will participate in assignments and activities such as group work, class discussion, and debates writing assignments, including an essay, and creating and de delivering a presentation in the form of a Google Slideshow presentation or creating a YouTube video. Lastly, social participation as democratic practice. Lastly, and I think the most important practice, the uh, skill that you practice is participating as an engaged citizen in democracy which involves appropriate behavior and attitudes to, to diversity and multiple perspectives and respecting everyone's perspective and point of view. All right, are you with me so far? Seems like we've covered a lot, but we are just getting warmed up. By now, you've heard the word globalization a lot, and you may be wondering what exactly is globalization. We'll start with the standard textbook definition and work from there. And by the way, don't worry if you don't catch on to what globalization is or what it means right away. It's a really complicated issue. The Alberta Social Studies K-12 Program of Studies definition of what globalization means states, Globalization is a process by which the world's citizens are becoming increasingly connected and interdependent. In simpler words, globalization is the way that our way of life is becoming way more and more shaped by the world around us. It is important to understand what global means to get what globalization means. Global refers to countries and forces that are outside of Canada. So for example, global could refer to music from the United States, food from Japan, that iPhone that you have that was manufactured in China, or the clothing that you're wearing that was manufactured in Bangladesh. The opposite of global is local, which refers to people and influences that are within Canada, such as your school, your family, the town of Vermilion, the province of Alberta, and your identity as a Canadian. 
Okay, now that you've learned, uh, started to learn a little bit about globalization, here are some examples. I've mentioned a few examples a moment ago, but here's some more specific ones. First, economic globalization. This refers to how globalization shapes our economic lives. It can include, include the jobs that you and your family work at, the goods and products that are imported from Canada or into Canada from other countries, and trade agreements that Canada has had with other countries, such as the North American Free Trade Agreement, otherwise known as NAFTA, or the new Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP, that Canada has recently joined. If you've ever shopped at a store like Walmart, Home Depot, Costco, or ever had a burger at McDonald's or a Burger King, you've experienced economic globalization, as all those stores are owned by large transnational corporations, most of them based in the United States. Same with our jobs. Nearly every job you can think of has some global connection. A farmer sells his wheat or beef to be exported to other countries. A doctor uses digital x-rays and MRI scans that can be digitally shared with her patients online anywhere in the world. An oil field laborer's jobs, uh, jobs wages are dependent on the global price of oil. And even a teacher like myself prepare my students for jobs that may not even exist today, but will be created 10 years from now and can be anywhere in the world. Economic globalization also includes how the value of our Canadian dollar, otherwise known as the loonie, changes its value compared to the U.S. dollar, meaning that one year or one day the loonie will be worth 95 cents U.S., and the next day or even the next week it will be plunged to 75 cents U.S. Ever wonder why that is? Well, you will learn later in the semester that shortly after the Second World War, the United States dollar was chosen to be the world standard currency as it was the most stable economy following the war. And so because of that, every, today, every country's currency is valued in comparison to the U.S. dollar. Uh, secondly, social globalization. This refers to how globalization shapes our identity, our culture, our language, and our way of life. This includes the music, food, entertainment, clothing, and language that we use on a daily basis. A lot of the music, TV, and movies we watch and listen to come from the United States, which is a global influence in our culture. Some people in Canada believe that this threatens our Canadian culture if most of our entertainment comes from the United States. And as such, the Canadian government has established the CRTC, or the Canadian Radio, Radio Television and Telecommunications Commission. This federal government program uh, regulates the amount of CanCon, or Canadian content, that we listen to and watch on Canadian radio and TV stations. With the purpose of ensuring that we are exposed to some Canadian music and TV, and not all of it is American. Another example of social globalization that you're probably more familiar with is the influence of social media like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, and a whole bunch of others. Social media has become a major influence in our lives, not just kids, but everyone. And because social media is global, what we read to, what we read, what we listen to, what we post online and social media can be shared globally in an instant. And sometimes stuff goes viral. Social media has influenced the way we interact with each other, how we choose a partner in life, how we shop. Sometimes social media has even left us vulnerable to things like attacks on our privacy and a relatively new phenomenon of fake news distorting what is real and what is not. Social media has even become so, inf so influential that it has changed the way governments affect us. Case in point is the role that social media played in Donald Trump winning the United States presidential election and his controversial use of Twitter to interact with Americans and world leaders as the U.S. president. Thirdly, political globalization. This refers to how globalization shapes our role as global citizens and the relationship that nations have with each other. An example of political globalization that had its beginnings just after World War II is the concept of human rights. The United Nations, which was an international organization created after the end of World War II to bring peace and stability to the world, adopted the UN Declaration of Human Rights. 
In this document are listed 30 basic human rights that all humans are believed to possess when they are born, such as the right to life, to be free and equal, to be protected from slavery, torture, and inhumane treatment, to freedom of expression and thought, the right to choose your government, and many other rights. Today, due to global communication technology and media, people can become aware of when people's basic human rights are being threatened, and many people choose to act to protect other people's human rights. Another example of political globalization is how people are increasingly affected by not only their government, but by other countries' governments around the world. An example of this is how the United States and North Korea seem to be pushing each other closer to nuclear war, while the rest of the world watches nervously, hoping that neither Donald Trump nor Kim Jong-un pushes the nuclear button. Every person on the planet is at risk of nuclear war. But as Canadians, we have no influence or control over these two countries, which is pretty scary. Another example of political globalization is our immigration policy in Canada. We are a country of immigrants, which brings certain opportunities and challenges politically for Canada. On one hand, Canada adopted the official government policy of multiculturalism and bilingualism, which most Canadians agree that have made Canada a better place to live. But on the other hand, cultural diversity has also challenged Canadian identity and culture, to the point where some people wonder if Canada has a national identity at all. And fourthly, environmental globalization. This refers to the process by which all people and communities are connected by the environment in our relationship to the land. We all share the same earth, which means every person in the world is connected environmentally. Our economy involves extracting, developing natural resources like trees, water, minerals, oil, fish, etc. This has an effect on the environment, which in relation affects all of us. Our dependency on fossil fuels has led to an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels. This, many people believe, has led to the events, uh, effects of climate change. Some people may believe that climate change is natural and not man-made, but an overwhelming amount of scientific evidence shows that the effects of climate change, such as the increasing global temperature, stronger storms, melting polar ice, these are all having real and serious effects on everyone in the world. In response, many people and governments have embraced policies of environmental sustainability and stewardship. We're moving closer, slowly, closer towards a world less dependent on fossil fuels and more de de developing green sources of, so of energy, such as solar, wind, and geothermal energy. Okay, this video is getting kind of long, so let's wrap this up. Here are a few fun facts about globalization that are related to what you're going to be learning in Social 10. Number one, most of the stuff we buy is manufactured in other countries. It's true, a lot of the products and food and media that we consume comes from outside of Canada. Why? This is because of global trade. Canada exports a lot of resources to other countries and they manufacture the products that we import and buy. We will be exploring the positive and negative effects of global trade later in the semester. Second, the world is divided into developed and developing countries. You are very lucky to live in Canada because Canada is a pretty wealthy country. Most people in the world are not as lucky as you are. This is because there are two types of countries. Developed countries, which are wealthy countries like Canada, United States, Australia, Japan, and most countries in Europe and developing countries, which are a range of moderately wealthy countries like Brazil, Mexico, China, and India, and some really poor countries like Bangladesh, Burkina Faso, uh, Afghanistan, and Haiti. Why are some countries wealthy and developed, and why are some not so wealthy and developing? To understand this, we'll be examining issues in our world's history, such as European imperialism and colonization, and contemporary global issues such as unequal trade relationships between countries and issues with global sustainable development. Third, popular culture. It's a dominant force in our lives. Popular culture or pop culture describes what is popular and trendy in our world and entertainment, media, uh, food, clothing, language, and other areas of our lives. 
Examples of pop culture are the latest hit song or TV show, a trendy clothing style that people adopt, or a famous saying or quote that people use. Some people believe pop culture is a problem in our society and that it can take over our own culture and turn everyone the same. Others don't see pop culture as that big of a deal because popular culture trends are superficial. They come and they go and they don't really change who we are. Either, either way, pop culture is a dominant global force in that what is trendy for the United States tends to spread around the world. Next, technology. It has changed our world. There's no arguing that our lives and our society have been forever changed by technology. Globalization has played a big role in the increase of, our, of technology in our day-to-day -day lives. And adversely, technology has allowed globalization to spread and accelerate. Everything from smartphones, satellite communication, driverless cars, medical innovations, and the internet are rapidly evolving and advancing. And we are all just barely able to keep up. Science, education, health, entertainment, transportation, even how we date are all examples of how technology has changed our lives. Lastly, globalization, it's not going away anytime soon. An important fact about globalization is that regardless if you believe in globalization, if it's positive or negative, it's here to stay. I can't imagine the world going back to the primitive days when people didn't know much about the world or didn't travel much further than the next community. Globalization is ever evolving and changing, but it will always remain a big part of our lives. The key question is, to what extent should we embrace globalization? So there you go. That was a brief, or not so brief, introduction to globalization. In the next video you'll be watching, uh, you'll be uh, beginning to explore chapter one, globalization and identity, where you will explore who you are, your, your individual and collective identity, and ways that globalization shapes your identity. Till then, see you later.